another episode of Musical Chairs with me, Cheer Up Charlie. And today we have the amazing, the star, the best newcomer that isn't so new anymore, Tamsin Althway! <laughs> what an intro, Charlie. Have you been doing this for a long time? Um, no, I think I started it about three weeks into lockdown. Okay, so not that long, but wow, you're amazing. No. So lovely to talk to you. So lovely to talk to you. It's an honour and a pleasure. Oh, you're so lovely. <laughs> okay. So if you're ready, we'll get right into the questions. Yes. What do you need to know? Well, are you ready for some funny questions, some interesting questions, and some serious questions? I'm ready for, for, from you. I'm ready for all of it. Good. What age did you discover you loved to perform? Oh, so when I was really young, my mum took me to see Cats, the musical. I think I was about nine and I, I already did like ballet and tap and stuff like that. But I didn't really know that that's what I wanted to do. I just knew mm -hmm. that I loved doing it. Went to see Cats, the musical. And then between the age of nine and maybe about 15, I, I saw it about nine times. <laughs> yeah. became, you can never see a musical too many times. I agree, because you always, you learn new things every time you see it, don't you? Yeah, you always see different things. Like the first time I got taken around a tour of a stage was when I got taken around the stage of Phantom and like the director showed me all like screens that I can see the conductor or all different exactly. places where things come down. And like from then on, I don't just focus on the performers in the stage. I look around the set and I look. I look everywhere because like in Wicked you see the flying monkeys operating other flying monkeys. See, I've, I've seen Wicked twice and I haven't even seen the flying monkeys. So that's next time I go, I'm going to be looking out for that. There's always so much work that goes into every show, I think. And then when you see it, I mean, when these were in the days, Charlie, when in, in the interval you used to sit on old Deuteronomy's lap. So you would go up and queue up and Brian Blessed, who's a very famous actor, he was old Deuteronomy. And there was a time, my mum's got a photo of me sitting on his lap in the interval. Now you can't do that now, you wouldn't be able to, but I remember I was sat on his lap thinking, I want to be on this stage dressed like that with all that makeup on. Mm -hmm. And I suppose that was a turning point, Cats, the mm -hmm. musical. All it takes, like, it's the same with books. All it takes is one good book or one good musical to get you into it, to start a love of it. Absolutely. But the, the luckiest thing, I think, for people like you and me, and lots of people that, you know, in lots of walks of life, if you can find a passion that you absolutely love at a young age, and it's difficult to not follow it, it's just such a magic, it's a magical gift. Okay. The fact that you know that you love that. You, there is no doubt in my mind that you will end up doing something like that as a job. <laughs> Thank you. So did you have a really supportive family growing up who were from the arts or were they like mine who knew absolutely zero, nil, nothing and, every, and any other word I can't be bothered to think of about the theatre? Yes. They were exactly like yours. My dad was a London cab driver, a black cab driver. So, and my mum was a housewife at the time and a mother and she did other things, but they didn't really think at the time, I don't think they thought it would be a proper job. Mm -hmm. But I've, I've obviously proved to them that I can make a living from it. So they were supportive. They were, I mean, mm -hmm. they were brilliantly supportive, but I don't think that they thought it was an actual job because they hadn't really been to the theatre lots. It was me mm -hmm. making them take me in the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where did you do your formal training? So when I was young, I used to do classes and I was at part-time at Sylvia Young, but my mum wouldn't let me go there full-time because it was... Um, it was just, she wanted me to have a broad spectrum of mm -hmm. education. So I didn't go there to study as a child, but I did go on a Saturday or a Wednesday evening to do drama, not for very <laughs> long actually. And then when I was 16 and I left school and I wasn't brilliant at anything, but I knew I wanted to sing, dance and act, actually mm -hmm. dance and act. 
stage. Singing was just a sideline. And so I went to, I auditioned for London Studio Centre, which was a brilliant school in King's Cross. It's now moved. Mm -hmm. But it's one of those schools that's very good at teaching you everything, preparing you for everything. So uh, between 16 and 19, I, and I met some of my favourite people in the world, like my bestest of friends. And then I left at 19 and, and I went on tour with a musical called Grease straight away. Mm -hmm. So then I, I did musical theatre for eight years before mm. I did any television. What was your first big break and do you prefer the stage, TV or narrating? Oh, such good questions, Charlie. Mm. Uh, so I would say I worked with Alan Aitbourne, who's a very, who's apparently after Shakespeare, the best British playwright or the most prolific British playwright. And he, mm. he employed me in Scarborough at the Stephen Joseph Theatre. And I mm -hmm. went back there three times. So I did three different things, three different productions with him. So I would say that was a massive break for me because it was, it was with he, his own work and he was directing it in mm -hmm. his theatre. And so I felt like I was being taken seriously as an actress. So that yeah. for me was a big break. And then on television, I suppose it was EastEnders. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Speaking of EastEnders, Ooh. you had some rather impressive roles, including Grease, Oliver, Red Caps, and a member of the incredible cast of EastEnders. But which one has really stood out to you? Oh. So I loved EastEnders because it opened lots of doors for me. Mm -hmm. um, but then Red Cap was a wonderful job because of many reasons and the cast and the scripts. I did an improvised drama called Out of Control uh, with a director called Dominic Savage. And mm. that was, it, 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 taught, it won lots of awards in, in film festivals and it, it, we toured around with it. And it was quite a, um, it was a big jump. It was my first jo job after EastEnders and I absolutely loved it. So I suppose it's that. Cool. What is your most memorable moment to date? You must have so, 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 so times infinity many. But does one really stand out to you? You mean the most memorable moment of my career or of my life? Of your career. Ah. Woohoo. Oh, there are so many. I suppose when you, when you like, Although awards don't matter, and we all know that, mm -hmm. when you are standing there holding a statue of, and, and someone's giving you an award for being the best newcomer or the best actress in something, I think it's probably, it, it's when, I still find it weird that when other people know your, your name. So when people say to me, my times and I think, so the thing is, it, it, you, you still never get used to it. You never get mm -hmm. used to the actual people knowing who you are. <laughs> however yeah. many years you've been doing it so yeah there are lots of memorable moments but that was pretty big this is quite memorable for me because you know I was bullied as a kid and I would love to have done something positive like you've done mm -hmm. you know you've made you've made something quite negative into something just wonderful and in a way when I look back at at my school years when I was bullied I wish I'd have done been brave enough to do something like this I was at a school where like my best friends and a group, a group of friends who were supposedly friends did start to bully me. And at first we thought it would go away and my mum was really, let's just leave it until it goes away. But it never went away. So she ended up taking me out of the school and I moved schools. Mm -hmm. And um, I think we became friends afterwards, but it was something that as a, as a child definitely scarred me, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, Charlie was born due to the bullying I received for my love of dance and song, particularly because I do not fit in with the stereotype of what a boy should do. How do you think we can change the negative behaviour that seems to just evolve massively from a playground? Um, well, I think the bottom line is to realise where it comes from, which is normally jealousy. Mm. Because... Yeah. People wouldn't be bullying you if they had something that they loved as much as you did, like with yeah. musical theatre. So 
if if they you know if a mate of yours that was a boy was uh, just loved tap dancing you wouldn't bully them would you you no. would understand it but you've got to remember an awful lot of people are not as broad minded and they haven't experienced as much of life i don't think there are certain people there are always going to be be people you can't change but the main thing that you can, what you can do is just continue to show your passion and your love for what you're doing and don't let it ground you mm -hmm. down. What, what those people probably, through what you're doing at the moment, your movement with Cheer Up Charlie and how you've affected so many people, I mean, that must be changing things for those bullies. They must be looking at themselves and thinking, what did I do wrong, don't you think? Mm-hmm. So maybe they're reflecting on themselves at the moment. I think the only way, I've always believed in killing people with kindness. Yeah. So you can't fight it with more fighting. I think you just have to pity them. Yeah. Pity those people and those attitudes and move forward with your own passions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you work with any charities? I do. Um, at the moment, it seems to be lots of NHS charities because of what we've been going through with COVID mm -hmm. and the lockdown. NHS, uh, all charities together. Um, Champions for Children, which is about children who are mainly in London who struggle with poverty and actually mm -hmm. having enough money to be able to eat because they're normally from single parent families and their parents are working hard. Mm -hmm. So, Champions for Children. NA, all NHS charities, Design Havens for Heroes, which is about designing houses or rooms for pe people in the NHS that don't have time to come home and make their houses look lovely. And I like interior design, so. Mm -hmm. I can see because you have a very nice house. <laughs> this isn't actually mine, but thank you. <laughs> um, but yes, so I like the idea of I mean, trying to make people's lives better is always something that I've strived towards. Mm -hmm. I do think, uh, you know, there are an awful lot of charities uh, uh, overseas that I'm not as involved in as I would like to be. At the moment, for the last few months, it's very much been concentrating on the NHS. Mm -hmm. But I'm yeah. sure that, that uh, it will always be there for me because cause we are so lucky. We've got the best healthcare system in the yeah, world. We have. We have. I also think that acting for others, there are theatrical um, mm -hmm. charities yeah. that I am behind, especially now in these times where a lot of my actor friends, um, obviously their livelihoods have gone and they still have to feed their children. So there are mm -hmm. lots of charities like acting for others and all of those that you can get involved in. Mm. Are you involved with any? Um, well, I'm involved mainly uh, with... Um, I'm sort of involved with acting for others as well, but we're mainly involved with Diana Award, which I'm now um, their youngest anti-bullying ambassador. Working What's as it bullying called? Ambassador. What's the it Diana called? Award. Oh, okay. So I need to have a look at that and see if I can help out there. It was in, um, it was created um, in like, Princess Diana created it. Ah, okay. And um, it wasn't, always about bullying. Um, there was an amazing man called Alex Holmes who was bullied and like me took a stand and created the Anti-Bullying Pro, which is the bullying part of the Diana Award. Brilliant, sounds amazing. Yeah. I mean, I am also involved in lots of Black Lives Matter charities. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's, I think it's good to spread yourself as far as you can without yeah. diluting everything. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm gonna look at your charity as well now. Also Macmillan Cancer Care, Marie Curie, mm -hmm. Bernardo's, Oxfam. Lots of charities um, have a lot of help, but there are lots of smaller charities that are, are less mm -hmm. supported. So I try and, and, and support the smaller ones. Yeah. And now for some funny questions. Hope Ooh, you're ready because like this is going to get very interesting. <laughs> what role would you most like to play, regardless of gender, animal, or age? Oh. 
I'd quite like to play Shrek on stage. That'd be cool. Just because, although the costume would be hot and sweaty, mm -hmm. there's Horrible. something about playing like an ugly duckling that comes into their own. Mm -hmm. That probably comes from being bullied at some point. It's like, it's like going, I'm not worthy, and now look at me now as a flower, isn't mm -hmm. it? Like yeah. blooming and blossoming. There's something plus, lovely about some, a, a character like that. And plus, Shrek's songs are absolutely amazing. Exactly, so we get all the best songs. Mm-hmm. So Shrekette, we should we call her? Um, I can't remember what her name is, Fiona. Yes, but Fiona, yes, a friend of mine have played Fiona, but what I mean is playing Shrek as a girl. Ah. What do you most get in trouble for of your partner and children? <sighs> mm. Okay. I have a couple of teeth that always capture all the food. Mm -hmm. And if I don't have a toothpick, which I generally carry around with me most of the time now, mm -hmm. or some kind of dental product that finds out where it is, if I don't do that, I will find a piece of card and rip it off so that I can pick my teeth with it. Don't hate me. But my children and my partner both go, oh. it's almost like they keep anything away from me in case I can use it. <laughs> They'll get a birthday card and keep it away from me in case I, I rip it and, and try to get the piece of something out of my teeth. <laughs> Have you ever tripped over or done anything embarrassing at a red carpet event? Oh yes, yeah, so many times. Um, let me just think. I have tripped over actually on stage before. Mm. Um, but a, a red carpet event. Um, I remember many years ago at the BAFTAs, it was pouring with rain and I had a huge umbrella like this. It was over <laughs> me and somebody was holding it, which I always feel a bit uncomfortable about because <laughs> someone holding an umbrella for you feels like a bit Hollywood. So I was holding my own umbrella and trying to lift up the back of my dress at the BAFTAs and it was a beautiful gold Chanel dress but all the whole back of it was wet so I tried to pick it up but at the same time I had the tickets and the umbrella in the other hand and I remember visibly tripping over then yes <laughs> that's cool and now is for my favorite question of all the funny questions what is your most disgusting habit? Because we all have one. Even someone as you, as glamorous as you, Tamsin. <laughs> Look at me, I'm not glamorous. <laughs> uh, disgusting habit. Right now, Charlie, I am picking my toenails. Ew. <laughs> that disgusting enough for you? I won't show you them, but I am actually picking my toenails. <coughs> so uh, move yeah. right along. <laughs> <laughs> That's for a round of quick fire questions. Love it. Favorite place to holiday? Oh, the Cotswolds. Chocolate or Haribo? Haribo. Finally, somebody agrees with me. Harry Bob is better than chocolate. Sweets plus, before chocolate, every yes, time. Plus, you can use them to soothe your voice for when you sing. You can't use chocolate to soothe your voice. No, it coats your voice and the yes. dairy makes it claggy. Claggy, uh -huh. claggy voice. Uh, no. What, what? Text or talk? Text. Heels or flats? Flats. Last song downloaded. Oh, oh, it's, um, uh, what's her name? Who, who did, who, the, uh, the song from Annie about Broadway. Uh, Marisha Wallace. Marisha Wallace. Uh, on BBC, on, on Radio 2, they played it. She, she is a musical theatre Broadway star. And, oh, the sun will come out tomorrow from Annie. Oh, she's okay. really recorded it and she's all the proceeds go to performers on Broadway. Okay.
Favourite musical? Hamilton at the moment. <laughs> Have you seen it on Disney Plus? Not yet. We're waiting till all the family are back together in London and we're going to watch it together. Mm -hmm. It's very good. And for the moment, it was amazing. Have you seen it? Mm-hmm. Seen them both. But I refused to watch Frozen 2 when it came out on DVD and pay £20 for it. So I waited till it came out on Disney Plus, which, which was like two months after it was actually released. So Yeah. And is it brilliant? It is brilliant. It's much so better than Frozen 1. It's better than Frozen better? 1. It's better than Frozen 1. I can't believe you said that. So both my girls are obsessed with um, Hamilton, but and they loved Frozen at the time, years ago. And they went to see Frozen 2 and they fell back in love with the whole Frozen franchise. <laughs> and so now I need to see Frozen 2. But um, Hamilton is the, the, my favorite uh, musical for recent times, but my favorite musical generally is Sunday in the Park with George. Mm, that's a good one. Yeah. I've read about that in my huge dictionary of musicals. You're going to be running the musical. You're going to be like the new Cameron Macintosh, I can see. <laughs> Superpower. Oh, to heal people. So anyone that's ill, unhealthy, they're, they're, you know, they're, they've got terminal diseases. You heal everyone. So it's eternal life because you're healing everyone. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's you fly good. into a hospital and go, healed, 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 healed. Everyone's healed. You fly into like a hospice where people are waiting to die. Heal, heal, heal. Yes, everyone's healed. Fast celebrity crush. <gasps> Scott Bayo from Happy Days and Joni and Chachi. You won't remember it. It's the black and white days. <laughs> Childhood book. Secret Garden by Francis Hodgson Burnett. Mm. Harry Potter house. Harry Potter house. Mm -hmm. Oh, my, ki my kids. One of them says that she thinks I'm a Gryffindor. And the other one says I'm definitely a... Slytherin? Slytherin. That's I my house. I... It's my alter ego. Is it? Yeah. I think... I think what, what's the one where you have to be brave? Gryffindor. Right, I think I'm a Gryffindor. I'd say Ravenclaw, actually. Okay, I'll take that. But I might do the test online. Yeah, try it. Okay. What are you? I'm Slytherin, because it's my alter ego. Right, okay. I might be Slytherin then. Harry Potter character. Well, hmm. Moni Myrtle. <laughs> that is a very good character. Just because I love the Garrick that. <laughs> Mine's Dobby. Of course it is. Last year I went as Dobby for World Book Day. <laughs> Did you? Yeah, basically, Mum got me a really, really good Dobby silicon mask and a Hessian sack. Perfect. That's all you need. Yeah. Now, I hope your tongue's not in a knot because it's time for a tongue twister. Oh no. <laughs> That's the reaction I get off everyone. Off you go. Lesser leather. Lesser leather. Never weathered. Lesser leather, never weathered. Wetter weather, better. Wet wetter weather, better. And now you say it. No idea. <laughs> lesser leather, leather, never, lesser leather nev never weathered, wetter weather. Lesser better. leather, never weathered, wetter weather, never leathered. <laughs> lesser leather, weather, 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 wetter leather, never weather, leather. <laughs> very good, I'll very never good. Get, I'll never get a job in the West End again. <laughs> very good, very good, bravo. <laughs> So that was another amazing episode of Musical Chairs with Cheer Up Charlie. Thank you so, so much, Tamsin. It was a pleasure and an 
honour talking to you. And you did well, very like well at the tongue twister. Uh, the tongue twister was, I can't see, even say it now, look, the tongue twister was my favourite part. And mm -hmm. I'm really looking forward to being a speech teacher around drama schools in the future. <laughs> yeah, um, it's but always but my favourite part, I'm, listening to people doing them. For, for now, I would like to say, Charlie, it's been a pleasure for me to talk to you. So never mind your pleasure. This has been <laughs> wonderful and probably some thank of my you. favourite questions I've ever been asked. Oh, thank you. It was amazing. Bye, Samson. Thank you. Bye, thank Charlie. You. Bye. So that was another amazing episode of Musical Chairs with Cheer Up Charlie. And remember to hit that subscribe button because this is going to be one of the only ways we can make a difference because we need to make a difference. And I need your help if we want to. Thank you. Bye.